If you were there in the 1989 Paris Air Show, you would be met with a sight to behold. The Antonov AN-225 Maria is the world's largest aircraft. A plane so big it could fly the Statue of Liberty all the way to London in a single flight. This is a feat that would have been deemed impossible if it weren't for the finest engineering of Soviet manufacturers. Because making a plane this big isn't as easy as you may think. The Maria was designed by the Soviets as a super heavy transport aircraft. Its purpose was to fly different parts of the Soviet space shuttle to their final launching site in Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. This meant that the Maria would need to transport parts over 60 tons strapped to the top of the aircraft, a task that poses many engineering difficulties in flying the plane. It means that the frame of the plane is put through incredible stress from the weight above. And because the payload is strapped at the center of the plane, it's up to the engineering of the airframe to distribute that weight evenly so the plane doesn't end up snapping in half. But to maintain the the plane's efficiency, they also couldn't overuse heavy materials like titanium or steel, and so the engineers had to find lightweight materials that could meet the strength requirements whilst finding a way to effectively use them to distribute the weight evenly. They do this by cleverly designing the airframe to spread across the length of the fuselage and wings. This would help stabilize the plane and maintain a more controllable center of gravity. For context, airframes are mainly made of components like longerons and formers. Each of these distribute the weight on different axes whilst working together to form the shape of the plane. We can compare the airframe of the two to five with the airframe of the Boeing 747 to get an idea of the principles used in the design. In the 227, you can see that the engineers put much more focus onto the launcher so that they could spread the weight across the axis. While in smaller aircraft like fighter jets, the focus is clearly put onto the formers for lateral stability in sharp turns. And these exact principles are used here in the 225. A larger focus on the launcher and stringers keep the plane stable from bending forces by distributing the weight evenly across the plane. The plane also features uniquely designed wings to help distribute the weight. Wings can come in all types of shapes and angles. Most modern planes use dihedral wings to increase the roll stability by elevating the center of gravity. But similar to the B-52, the 225 uses anhedral wings. These wings distribute the weight across the wings since the tips are positioned lower than the fuselage evening out the payload. This gets into a few problems with stability that I'll get onto later, but distributes the weight effectively across the plane. But this clever weight distribution doesn't solve our problem of strength. Because the plane is already so heavy, we need a lightweight material that is also incredibly strong to resist the weight force. The two most common materials used for aircraft design are aluminum and titanium. But aluminum is just not strong enough, whilst titanium can easily hold the weight but is way too heavy. Because of this, we need a metal that is the Goldilocks between the two, the 7000 series aluminum alloy. 7000 series aluminum is the strongest aluminum alloy, with a strength nearly hitting the lowest titaniums whilst being at a weight barely above aluminum. Because of this, the material for the 225 was chosen to be 7000 series aluminum, with little parts of titanium that would keep the plane structurally intact from the immense weight. But making a plane that can resist all this weight is one thing, whilst making a plane that can fly with all this weight is another. All said and done, the Antonov had a max takeoff weight of 700 tons. That's an insane amount of weight to lift thousands of feet up in the air. Planes have a balance of lift, drag, thrust, and gravity to fly. But because their plane is so incredibly large, its weight and drag is already at extreme levels, which means that we need to up the other two forces to be able to get off the ground. The 225 takes care of thrust by integrating six turbofan engines, three for each wing that produce an astonishing 1.3 mega newtons of thrust. But to generate a lift, the 225 has to implement massive 9,700 square foot swept-back wings. These wings are lift-producing machines, with each also housing the three engines and giant control surfaces that steer the plane. But having six engines on a plane this heavy also introduces the problem of stability. We also have to keep in mind that this plane doesn't just need to fly, but also make turns and move in the air in unpredictable ways. And although having a lot of weight helps make tipping over harder, it also magnifies the consequences if it happens. And for a plane like this, losing the stability in turns wouldn't be that far-fetched considering the lower center of gravity from the anhedral wings. Because of this, we have to design the surfaces to make sure that the plane doesn't tip over in high-angle maneuvers. And the Maria implements many tactics to prevent this from happening. The first is the infamous T-tail. The tail was initially designed to open up more space on the top for payload, but it also holds the control surfaces that are responsible for turning the plane and keeping it from tipping back. To adjust the yaw of the plane, the vertical stabilizer, which forms the main structure of the T-tail, provides the necessary stability whilst the rudder allows the pilot to deflect air right or left. By using the rudder, the pilot can control the aircraft's heading and counteract any yawing movements from factors such as crosswinds or asymmetrical thrust. But as the plane comes to the end of its trip, how does it actually land? This 700-ton monster can't operate on normal landing gear, so it has to implement this insane 32-wheel landing gear system that distributes the weight across all these wheels, which avoids them from collapsing on the runway. 
With that said, the Maria was first shown to the West in the 1989 Paris Air Show flying around with the Buran Space Shuttle. From the outside, the Maria looked like a giant Soviet masterpiece that promised that the Soviets were only getting started in developing spacecraft. But in reality, the Buran only ever launched once, which left the Maria a plane no longer with a purpose. Eventually, the Soviet Union collapsed and the Maria was sent into storage at Kiev Airport in Ukraine. Years later, the plane seemed destined to be taken for scraps. But in 2001, Antonov Airlines were faced with a cargo mission that was beyond the capabilities of even their largest 124s. Desperate for a solution, they turned back to the Maria. With a bit of renovating, they brought the giant back to become the world's largest cargo plane. Since then, this has been the lifelong mission of the Maria, the world's largest cargo plane, taking off with a weight of up to 1.4 million pounds, drawing crowds everywhere it went. That was until recently in 2022, when the plane was destroyed in the Battle of Antonov Airports in Kiev as a result of the Russian invasion. Currently, the plane remains in ruins in the airport, but plans to finish a half-built second 225 have received major incentives since the destruction of the first plane. Either way, the Antonov AN-225 Maria was and maybe will be a fascinating relic of the Cold War and is an icon for the possibilities of clever engineering in aviation.